And then we have to go back to them and say, well, actually, Alexander II, the King of Scotland, sent down Alan de Galloway, who was the High Constable of Scotland, who was one of the people at Runnymede on the 15th of June in 1215, who approved the Magna Carta. And there was also a man from Wales, a man from Ireland, and even a man from France. So the Magna Carta was very much a British event. And we wrote an article about that. And we'll put that up there in the link. And as for its effect, as for its legal effect, historians tend to be agreed that at that time, it did not have much of a legal effect. And I believe that the Pope actually declared it null and void. But that's kind of absolutely irrelevant because the the value of Magna Carta over time is what it has contributed uh, to the the constitutional and democratic order of the British derived world. And when we uh, throughout the British Empire, when we were setting up parliaments and things like that, Magna Carta and the general principles involved in that would um, would apply. So it's very much a British historical document. And we've got uh, an old copy here of the Magna Carta. And we'll, 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 we'll put that up um, in the links. Now, the generally the, the main area of Magna Carta is that people talk about is paragraphs 39 and 40. Paragraph 39, no free man shall be seized or imprisoned or stripped of his rights or possessions or outlawed or exiled or deprived of his standing in any other way, nor will we proceed with force against him or send others to do so except by the lawful judgment of his equals or by the law of the land. Now that sort of thing in 1215 was pretty revolutionary to say the least. 